All right. I'm live. Okay, guys. Settle down. Settle down. Settle down, people. <laughs> Ooh. I'm waiting for some explanation, some sort of explanation from everybody that counted Kenya Nisabikili out. Mainly coming from America. I know you guys probably are still asleep, but some of you woke up last night to watch the Berlin Marathon. Talk to me. For live. Come on. Say something, guys. Some said it's too old for a marathon runner. Kenya Nisabikili never finishes. He hasn't got it in him. <laughs> huh? Right. Genuinely thought he was finished. Can I name and shame you, Theo? <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. Next. I want my apologies, guys. Come on. <laughs> you owe Mr. Bikili an apology. You didn't look at his history. Yeah, you didn't see how he got to where he could not finish it. A race. And when he announced his comeback, you... You doubted the guy. Next, eight watching. Let's have it. Tell me why you guys doubted Bikini. And have you watched the race before I break it down? So happy for Bikini. I'm not happy. He must for a record. The cocks. Yeah. You know, when he crossed the finish line and I saw two seconds off, uh, I didn't scream. Because I know, I know, deep in his heart, he wanted that world record. I know he was going for a PB. I don't know if he expected Legacy to break away from him like that and pull out a 248 kilometer. But I noticed that Bikili done something he hadn't done in other races. He looked at his watch. I'm, I'll have to look back on his other races to see if he's carrying a watch all the time. What a race, how he came back to the leaders and finished so strong. Yeah, sorry, I lost my connection. I'm back live, so I'm using 4G now. Um, Where was I? Um... Oh, I forgot my train of thought. Well, oh yeah, I was saying, I, I don't think Bikili slowed down because he done something he had never done before in a marathon. I'm not too sure if he's carried a watch in his other races, but he constantly glanced down at his watch. So he had a game plan going on there. He knew what he had set out to do. What he didn't expect is probably for the other two runners to kick and kick they did throwing down a 248 kilometer bikili stuck to his game plan and that was at the man that was probably around the 30 kilometer mark that guy went i guess he spinning his legs like in a washing machine um theo you said what a race he came back to the leaders finished so strong uh are you shocked? No, I'm not shocked because I always had this desire for Bikili to do what his body can do, what it's been built to do. Yeah? The gift that the creator gave him. It's just that life got in the way. Remember, you guys, his girlfriend passed away before you got married, right? That was a big blow. And then, and then injury, injury, injury. And he still kept world class. Uh, capabilities right in him and you guys just wrote him out ignoring the fact that he ran the fastest debut in Paris right and then he almost breaks the world record which I still argue about the one set by Dennis Kimetu missing it by two seconds not by 20303 and then okay yeah fair and fine he drops out of other marathons because he feels an injury coming on and I did say at the time when I seen him running, running in the London Marathon with Saeed, we noticed that he had put on weight. Also, watching him train, I also noticed that he was slightly bloated. His belly was slightly bloated. 
and you know i don't know if you heard me through the universe saying he needs to lose weight but yeah he came in looking super lean gaunt thin arms shoulder blades sticking out thighs nice and trim and yeah he stuck to his game plan stuck to his game plan 25 people watching you gotta say something 27 talk to me bikini stuck to his game plan so he was glancing down at his watch and you guys gotta give him credit because i know i shouldn't compare him to kipchoge somebody earlier on said let bikini run his race let kipchoge run his race don't hate when in my videos have i ever used the word hate i love all of the runners they're all like my kids I just don't know which one to pick. I love them all. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just good that we have banter. It's called banter. Remember that old school word where we have banter before political correctness came along? And we can kind of like, in a friendly gesture, you mainly just mock each other, laugh at each other, and see who's the best guy to win. Uh, such an inspiration. Do you reckon he will be back what did that say do you do you reckon he will break it he almost broke it man by two seconds and he, he didn't have a set up pacemakers like what kipchoge really has you know that triangle formation that kipchoge really really um always has kipchoge sets out he announces it he says i'm gonna break the world record bikili said i want to go for my pb and then the race had its own flavor and own you know it turned out different and uh, he, was, he was he was working i seen some teeth for the first time in a long time from bikili i did see some teeth uh byron you said he's my hero i never doubted him one but i've just been sad it's taken him so many years to get back to his form i hope he tries again he definitely will he never announced his retirement. He never did in the past when all of you counted him out. Hmm? Shame on you guys, man. Shame on you guys. You let your king down. You let the king down. Uh, so, yeah. Do we want to see a Bikili Kipchoge showdown? Yes. And we want to see it balanced as well. Yeah. Either no paces or cases from both countries balance it out mano a mano man on man don't set it up to favor one athlete no come on let's have the old school ways back fair on fair yeah no quarter given no gifts as they say in cycling no gifts mano a mano bring it so yeah, we oh wow, 44 people watching. That's fantastic. Uh, Legacy, though, has got a 204 personal best. He's the winner of the Tokyo Marathon this year. So he jumps from 204 to, what, what did he get? 201, was it 201? 201, 40 something? No, 201, 202, I think he got. Let's see. Sorry, I was distracted by this message. Uh... Biruk, if Bikili is in full form, free of injury, damn, I would bet that NK, uh, no one could possibly beat him. The, the shortest, the smallest, destroys them all. And do you see his stride pattern? Did you see uh, um, Legacy's stride pattern? Tap, 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 tap. Washing machine, yeah? It looks deceiving. And then Bikili, I think if you count his uh, steps per minute, strides per minute compared to Legacy, still closes the gap. Did you see how he passed the other guy, the second place guy in green and blue? Bye bye, you've blown out the back. Passed him like he's going backwards. And that's that power coming from those legs. He's, the, the angle that he strikes the ground at, and man. That's all down to the gift you've been given. Uh, none of us can copy that form. I haven't seen anybody with that form besides myself. <laughs> no, um, it, it was very, he's got a form very, very similar to 
Hailey. There's a video of him and Hailey on the track just as he's about to pass Hailey. Uh, I think it's the Ethiopian, uh, they're in the Olympics and stride for stride. Uh, Byron Kramer, it took Elod years on injury free marathon running to achieve his times and his record. Bikili only took three months. You said it. You said it. This is what I've been saying all along. Give Bikili a chance to be injury free as well. Let his machine operate. Everybody is so quick to count him out. And I am glad that finally I just got a bath. <laughs> Some of you said 205. Some of you said DNF. Nate Silvers, did you go back to sleep this morning, Nate? Or did he keep you up? I remember I said, uh, you said you're going to go back to sleep. And I said, if he does, um, I'm just going to blame everything on you, Nate Silvers. If Bikili had uh, failed to complete the race. Yeah, what a race, man. The Berlin Marathon. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Bikili has got a knack for pulling back. And I think if Kipchoge has, Kipchoge definitely watched the race, definitely. And uh, Mo definitely watched the race. They know that Bikili kind of like drops back. I still say, I have to look at the numbers. I still say, it's not that he drops back. Maybe other people speed up. In this race, he didn't drop back. Other people sped up. In the others, yeah, he dropped back. And then he tries to come back. So if Kipchoge notices Bikili doing that drop back, don't give him a chance to come back. Then again, Bikili is going to know that. Kipchoge knows he's going to drop back. So it's, it's man, oh, man, oh, we want to see gun to tape. Two athletes. If they can come up with something new to do the two-hour marathon, then why can't we have two athletes in a marathon race like Michael Johnson and Donovan Bailey? Let's settle it. You're good at 100 meters. You're good at 200 meters. So let's go 150 meters. Remember... The man with the loudest mouth didn't finish. Injury. So let's see it happen. Choose the place. Hey, we'll all watch. No paces. Let's go. No drafting. No sitting on each other's tails and benefiting. Side by side. Let's go dukes. Fair, fair. No knives, no guns. Hey. So I didn't go for my cycle this morning. I had given up hope finding a, a, somewhere to watch it live until I went on to YouTube. There's some gangsters on YouTube streaming it live. One channel got taken down for copyright. I had a backup channel going on my mobile phone. And I'll post that video later on uh, to show my reaction. Uh, I think I read that one already, all those comments. So uh, yeah, I had planned to go for a cycle and it's raining, but I got the gear ready. But I managed to find a live channel on YouTube showing it. It was in German, but running is running. You can understand it. It's like music. Language can be understood all around. So uh, what we got coming up next, we got a uh, two hour marathon challenge on the 12th of October. And remind me, when is the Chicago Marathon? Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Mo do his thing in that race as well. And I hope he feels inspired by what Bikili has just done. It's time to up the game because look what Legacy almost did to the world record. Comes from nowhere, okay? A guy was spinning his wheels, man. Absolutely spinning his wheels. It just goes to show that when you keep your eye on the favorite runners all the time, the others behind the scene, the number two guy is always training harder. So you just got to keep your eye out and um, focus on the other runners. And there's the, the, the depth and field of talented athletes out there in the marathon world these days is crazy. I don't know what it's down to. Is it, is it down to the shoes? Uh, 
what is it down to? Yeah, is it different training? Have they all found a certain way of training? I, I noticed that some of the Western coaches are now going out to Kenya and Ethiopia and training their athletes out there. Mo Farah's uh, coach, Paula Ratcliffe's husband for one, is out training Mo in Ethiopia. And uh, you got a few other coaches as well that go out to Ethiopia and Kenya to learn those ways as well. By the way, I heard that Paula Ratcliffe was running in the uh, Berlin Marathon. Anybody know how she did? Let us know. Has she made a comeback? Not too sure. Okay, so uh, I'll upload my reaction to the Berlin Marathon later on. Uh, maybe I'll go for a cycle ride. I'm not sure. It's raining outside. You guys let me know your... What we got? Oh, we still got the same comments coming up, guys. Give me a few more comments. Oh, there we go. I had to scroll down. Farah will have bikini any day, joking, Theo. <laughs> okay, let me read all your comments before I shoot off. There is a short clip we can see about the... Is there, is there a short clip we can see about the race? Okay, uh, if you go on to... On YouTube, right? If they haven't taken it down yet, it's... Uh, TK, capital TK TV, and there's a bunch of the, the what do you call it, uh, the logo for the channel is a bunch of guys standing, that's the one you should click on, it should show you, I'm not sure if they're still live, All right, Brian, you said you're right in your videos, he looks lean, and I also couldn't help but notice this race developed exactly beat for beat. Of his 216 race. Oh, okay. Huh. Strong start. Hamstrings slowed him down mid race. Did it? I didn't notice that. I thought I thought maybe the other guys just sped up. Came back in the end and finished second in the world. Only seconds off the world record. 2016, 2019. I don't quite get what you're talking about there, Brian. Uh, let me see. Mustafa Kilo. Good Kinsa. Is that his nickname? Kinsa? I like that. I like that nickname. Very nice. Alright, any more comments, guys? Do you think if Elud and Kenyanisa were both in the same race, Kenyanisa would win? I, I, I think at the moment, um, Kipchoge has been training at a faster pace, you know. His fart legs and, and lap repeats are specifically tailored to go to the to go to Mars and not to the moon. If you know what I'm saying, it's a different payload, different requirements. So, if Kipchoge Kip had come into the race now, he'd have he'd have had a, a probably kept at their pace easy and maybe chose not to break away and then have him prepared at a faster pace, kicked with Legacy and then just blew away, blown away Legacy. So uh, Bikili had prepared to break his personal best. Although I think he held something back. He, these guys know what pace they're training at. And there's a whole lot of secrecy and a little bit of spying going on out there and talk, you know, behind the scenes. Athletes letting each other know, oh, so, so in, in, in they've done 20 laps with... 30 second break or at this pace and da, 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 they, they, they're sharing secrets out there so Bikili is going to go okay so that's what it takes to run a two hour challenge or one how did he break his 139 come on I'm an artist when when I see a Rembrandt painting I want to know well how Rembrandt done it we all do right so why can't Kenyanisa say to himself wow Bikili done a uh, Kipchoge done a 201.39, how? How? How does he do it? What training is he doing? Okay, the new Nike shoes, bang, I got them. Morton, yeah, they're both on the Morton drinks. I need to give myself some of that. I heard there's a new uh, NASA or Air Force uh, drink that's been formulated by NASA for the, the USA Air Force that uh, the athletes are now drinking and it's legal. Is that Morton? I don't know. 
Uh, Rewatch his Berlin race against Kip Sang and watch this one. The races mirror each other. LOL, no joke. I will do. I will do. Definitely, definitely. I loved that Kip Sang race. Poor Kip Sang. Eh? He was kicking. He was kicking. But um, uh, Kenyan East has got something else left in the tank, man. I am an int I I am an interview after the race. He just said his hamstring tightened. Okay, slowing him down. Wow. Okay. Same thing against Kip Sang hamstring. Um, somebody once said to me years ago when I used to do lots of squats and deadlifts uh, for 400 meter racing and stuff, and my legs got really really big. They said, one day you will suffer from hamstring problems, and I did. I was doing some training, uh, and um, coming around the bend at, at, at top speed and it just felt like somebody put a knife into my left hamstring and that that just cancelled me out of uh, athletics until my later age in my 35s where they, when I decided not to be a sprinter anymore dropped down to 200 and 400 I wasn't a 100 meter sprinter anymore uh, hey bro, who's that? Uh, Azia Sabri, I think that was. What other comments we got? Um, so yeah, I was still saying, I think um, these guys share secrets on who's training, what's training, and da 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 da. And now, if you want to win a race, 205 is slow. 205 is slow. You got to bring it, man. You got to bring it. Now, now. Everybody's finishing under, almost everybody's finishing under 203 to win a, a world-class race. If we're looking at Berlin, we're looking at London, the big ones, the main ones. So bring your game, your game plan, man, because it's on, on. All right, I'm going to take a few more comments, guys. A few more comments. Um, what we got? What we got? What we got? Daniel Mawai, if I can say that properly, how does he compare with Kipchoge? If it was here to it, I'll answer that one. Bikili is the greatest of all time. Yeah. Really is, yeah. You know what I might do? I might just check that clock again. <laughs> how sad am I, eh? Check the clock again. And, uh... See if it's correct. Because remember what happened to Jeffrey Mutai. They all thought and were told they were on record pace and then it got denied. Yeah. So it's happened a few times. I don't trust the Berlin Marathon clock. Mm -mm. Give to Caesar. Unto Caesar. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, what do you think... Kenyan Issa Bikili ate for breakfast this morning. Did you watch the half marathon world record cam war? Right? And at, at around 30 minutes, the announcer says uh, they had breakfast with Jeffrey Cam war. And uh, they were expecting him to have a crescent or something like that. I don't know. And so the other guy said, oh, what did he have? And they said, well, he had uh, oats, fruit, toast, and tea. And he said this three times. Tea with lots and lots and lots of sugar. Bang. There we go, Mr. Jamie Oliver. Jamie Oliver got sugar banned in this country. The, the sugar phobe, man. How do you ban something that the human body runs on at a cellular level? Our brains love it. Our muscles love it. Our cells love it. Yes, we can run on something else, but there's a byproduct. The, 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 the byproduct, the fuel burns dirty when we use a different fuel for our bodies. Sugar gives off very little byproduct and the by, the byproduct i'm talking about is when you burn a piece of wood there's a law that says that dictates 
and it's not written by us. The Almighty writes that law long before us. Smoke is given off or carbon dioxide is given off. Do you know what I mean? The dirtier the fuel, the more dirty, the toxic is given off. Toxins are given off. And when you have high fat diet based on animal products, <laughs> protein, yeah, you will run, but the byproduct is dirty. Your performance, you're not performing at your ultimate. And not only that, you may shine now, the short term gains now, but later on in life, that's what these popular diets are not banking on. Later on in life, there's side effects. Join the dots, high cholesterol, heart attack, stroke, arteriosclerosis, arthritis, gout, rheumatism, cancer, all connected. Those are all fifth stages of disease. Disease has got five stages. The first stage is your headache. It's your warning sign. But when you eat a plant-based, low fat, low protein, meaning no animal products, high carbohydrate diet, you're basically going back to nature, how we were created. No canines, no acidic saliva like lions, longer intestines, no claws. We don't salivate when we see cows in the field, they do. We salivate when we see fruits. You know what I mean? That's what we're designed to do. Look at this. Specifically designed to pick fruit off the tree. That's it. Rethink your game plan, guys. Yes, we've, we, we know how to train now. Yes, we've got the best training equipment. Put the best natural fuel. And it's not about discovering new fuels. It's about rediscovering how we were made. That's it. Just rediscover how we were made. So Jeffrey Camor had lots and lots of sugar in his tea. And I've always said this. I've read it in their books. I've seen it in the videos. They will have ugali, which is maize, high carbohydrate. Right? And they even bring it to their hotel suites and cook it. Their coaches and management bring it over. And I've asked, I've asked them i've asked the athletes i've asked the managers i've asked the physios what do these guys eat yes and sometimes they'll come to to these um western races and slightly break their diet compromise temptation and then watch their performance i remember asking wilson keep saying what do you eat I asked Wilson Kipsang's management, what does he eat oh, when he comes? Oh, fish, chicken, he eats anything he wants. And You can't train your vehicle on the best fuel leading up to the race. And then on the day of the Formula One race, you decide to put a slightly dirtier fuel. That car, is the analysis is not going to perform at its best. You know, when they, when they, when, Formula One is amazing. You see all those technicians and guys monitoring those screens for, for simple, tiny little things. Aerodynamics, tire grip, this, that, that, that. They're all about performance. The human body does that automatically to itself. It doesn't need anybody else. It's been preset. That's its default. You can't change that, guys. And, and the Formula One guys know when things are not right, they adjust. We have to not adjust, we have to go back because we've drifted away off how we were meant to eat. So Jeffrey Camor had a high carbohydrate diet that morning. And no doubt his drinks were high carbohydrates, electrolytes. And there's such a big sugar phobe going on here in the UK. And to me, when somebody says sugar, I think of cane sugar. I'm not talking about biscuits and cakes and all these high fatty sugary foods you can't taste the fat you can taste the sugar therefore sugar gets the blame when you do get fat 
I'm not talking about those those foods. I'm talking about clean, low-fat carbohydrates, ugali, maize, rice, pasta, wheat products. If you're glu if you're not gluten intolerant, your potatoes, your fruit. Fruit is the optimum fuel for the human body, but you have to eat enough of it. Why? One, because it's what nature intended us to eat. Before we discovered to cook and farm and do use of fire and stuff. Right? Two, you don't have to cook it. Three, it's high in fiber. Four, you get your water. This pure distilled water. It's done all that for you. And there's a, a vibrating life force in it. We are alive. Therefore, we must eat live things. Life begets life. Life gives life. Yeah? A lion kills a zebra, does not cook it. Once you cook something, it's, it's death. And you're asking death to give you back life. Who the hell are you? We've broken many laws. And that's why now we see us destroying our planet in an effort to justify our way of living through our own intelligence which is really we're clever for stupid things so clever that we're going to go burn the most beautiful forest on this planet amazon forest still burning all because beef cattle ranching hmm? Beef cattle, all because we insist on eating a food that causes us cancer. And lots of pain and suffering to the animals. Have you seen what they do in the slaughterhouses to these animals? If you haven't, watch Earthlings. Which other documentaries can you watch? There was one that I, I, I just couldn't finish watching. I need to finish watching it. It was really bad. And while I'm talking to you guys, I'll try and think of it at the back of my mind. It was really, really bad. I couldn't even finish watching it, man. Tears sitting here. By the way, there's a video on Instagram. If you go on um, Light Knowledge, or I think it's the Real Tarzan's channel, of an elephant that got bumped in India. And its skin is all off. It got knocked by a train. and Yeah. It's not the first time for an elephant to get knocked by a train. In Zimbabwe, I've heard of elephants getting knocked by a train as well in the past. But the, the difference now is that social media so shows us everything. And this elephant is trying to get, pick itself up. And obviously no one can is strong enough to lift it up. And it's not crying out for help. It doesn't know how to communicate. It... Um, it's looking at its tormentors and it's, it, it, it moves, you can tell things are broken. And that's, that's it eventually died, 5.30 yesterday. Um, but that's just an example of what we're doing to ourselves, to our planet. If you want to stop the destruction of this planet, people, try a plant-based diet. You can thrive not just survive it's just that you're addicted to your to your tastes and uh you're adamant that oh i cannot do without my protein and it's gonna kill you it's gonna kill you yeah you're young now and full of bounce and stuff and who's this guy with dreads from africa talking about oh, who does he think he is and, I'm just a voice in the darkness reaching out to you, man. I had my chance on this planet, and it was beautiful in the 1970s and 1980s. You guys got to take over from our slot now. Hmm? We were supposed to leave you a good planet. We failed. Now it's your turn. Don't get me started on veganism, man. Jeffrey Camor ate a plant-based diet the morning he set his world record. Okay. What else have we got? Uh, let's see. My hero of Ethiopia next to Miniliki. Who's Miniliki? 
is he a president or something or past president one day you will break the record yeah i think if bikili had broken the record you know i've been very close to retiring man you know gone right that's it i'm done i've got i've done everything i wanted to do in athletics i got a world record time's up i don't think he's interested in the two-hour barrier unless if uh nike comes his way or ineos comes his way any running team and says right fair's fair give it a go we'll set you up with the paces um uh, bikili's got one more olympic gold left in him has he won olympic marathon gold i'm not too sure if that'll interest him now the, the guy wants a world record you know i i would want to know that uh i'm the fastest and the best when I was once the fastest and the best, and I beat the fastest and the best at the time. There's videos of Bikili taking out all the best, and all the best taking him out. But at some point he knew you as the best, so then you're not afraid of anybody then when you are the best. You know that it's just one or two seconds, and that comes down to the mindset. How much do you want it? How much are you willing to hurt to pay for it? I know they look comfortable and maybe the camera one day should zoom in on the, just the face. Show us how much the mouth is open, like what they do in cycling. Show us uh, how relaxed his jawline is. Is there any frowning? How much is hurting? You can't read any of Kipchoge's signals except for when he smiles just before the last mile. You know. Um... Yeah, so maybe they should, they should zoom in like that. I'm trying to think about this, uh, what is it called? It's by Aussie Farms. Aussie Farms is the filmmaker. And the narrator is the guy that played Caesar in uh, Gladiator. There you go. You can look it up. I, I think it's on YouTube. So if you look for Aussie Farms channel, A-U-S-S-I-E Farms, uh, channel and then the, the guy has done the, the documentary i forgot what it's called uh dominion ah i knew i'd i knew i'd bring it up because if i don't get your attention now on a bikili topic in one of my other videos you guys won't click on it and those of you that are still watching i see there's 40 of you watching you gotta watch that documentary by aussie farms and it's called dominion if you can watch the whole video, or you can start off with earthlings, or cowspiracy, or what the health. There's lots of documentaries out there that many of you are oblivious to. Are we going to save our planet or not? And last night I went to bed thinking, you know, yes, I do a lot of posts on Instagram vegan bro science showing what's going on going on in the way we treat animals on this planet and there's no need for it you know what i mean there's no need for it the cruelty the hunting the poaching the slaughterhouses the need to eat meat there's no need for it we once lived on this planet without that happily and this planet was abundant with life how oh, funny, the only planet in, in the known universe that has life on it, we come here and we're killing each other and everything. How funny is that? Yeah, so I went to bed last night thinking, uh, social media, is, is, it's good, it spreads the word, but it's not quite enough. We need... We need, we need I need to take the, the fight to the front. We literally have to go up one on one against the, these bad people. That's the only way to fight bad people, man. Because they, to them, words don't mean nothing anymore. It's just words. Bad people only recognize overwhelming force. Good force. That force has got to be for good. And if it comes from a good place, then the God of this universe will back us up. We've got to take the fight to the front. 
my hope is that one day I will focus on uh, the fight against the slaughter of rhinos. I will be going back to Zimbabwe in this life or the next. Uh, if you guys watched my The Real Lion King video, please, you, know, you can watch it. It's 41 minutes long. I talk about what Disney should have done in the remake, in the remake of The Lion King. Um, yeah, watch it. I'm not going to talk about it here. Just watch it. And I talk about an elephant war trekker that was slaughtered for hunting purposes and i mentioned that um i had got in contact with a hunting outfit out in zimbabwe and uh, we went back and forth a little bit on instagram and they finally granted me permission to call them up and do an interview with them asking them why they justify their hunting when animals are extinct and they say it's conservation i don't like that that just doesn't in order to uh, prevent a species from becoming extinct you kill it that, that doesn't make sense you know so yeah they, they, they they're not going to let go of their business obviously that's their source of income zimbabwe is very hard at the moment and uh, i think they've just uh, approved another hunting concession uh, right near Wanky National Park, along with the Botswana government. So you're going to get more hunters going to go kill elephants for, for, no for no particular reason. Simply because they look different to us. And somebody in China, Thailand, and Vietnam, and all those uh, eastern countries say they have healing properties when they don't. Or you want a fancy miniature display on your you got too much wealth man you're bored with it why don't you pump it into making more elephants and returning this your earth back to what it was stop the idiot behavior uh kenya the load of runners i am happy that the world record still remains in the hands of kenya <laughs> respect yeah 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 i can understand if, look if the world record belonged to a zimbabwean as well i'd want it kept in zimbabwe but zimbabweans are nowhere near the top level i know there's a few athletes that go out there and train but they are probably maybe 15 10 minutes off the running pace at the moment um there's just too much struggle for survival going on out there. The runners are talented, but I don't know if they've got the the skill set of the Kenyans and Ethiopians simply because uh, their running technique is different. And I'm Zimbabwean. Uh, it's, it comes down to the running technique as well as one of the factors that makes you a world-class runner. And Zimbabweans, if you watch uh, some of the South African runners that sometimes are pacing elude or or in the race, they run quite staccato, so uh, short choppy strides, and they're a little bit upright, and the uh, hips sit a little bit low. You gotta lift the hips, lean forward, lope. That's the new best thing. That's the iPhone 10 at the moment. That is the iPhone 10 at the moment. So I don't know where Zimbabweans will feature then. See, there's still the dead lion rises again. Only second left to break the record. Proud of you, Kenya Nisa. Yeah, very proud. And I, I hope to see him in London again. Uh, although I don't think he'll come and train where I normally film them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he likes to be left alone, and I can respect that. So, Mr. Bikili, if you're watching that, I'll leave you alone. There's other places you can go train. Maybe you'll go train where Mofar trains. Yeah. And Mofar, you can come to our, our place. And me and you can have a chat. There's no bad blood. It's just, it's just banter. You know, if you want to make something exciting, there's got to be, if we're all on the same side, it's boring. So uh, I realize that everybody loves Mofar. I secretly love him as well. But 
So I just want to be the, the naughty guy on the, on the Monopoly board. You know what I mean? If everybody follows the rules on the Monopoly board, it's boring. There's got to be a naughty guy there that's you know, making deals on the side and trying to steal from the bank. You know what I mean? And he gets caught and he's laughing. Remember, it's always that happy uncle that gives you the best memories in life. That's what I try and do at the athletics. Just try and bash our heads together. And it's good. It's good. At the end of the day, we all just love athletics. Why is that? Because we all run. It's part of our human nature. One of the first things a child learns to do when they walk. Nobody says, hey, did you know you can go faster? They just, they want to get to wherever they're going just a little bit faster. Okay, where else have we got? Uh, still 32 of you watching. I really appreciate that. And I do hope you're going to go watch the uh, documentaries I suggested. It's Sunday, so give it a watch. And I, you don't have to be vegan to agree with what I'm saying. I know that your, your instinct, inbuilt instinct, will recognize that there's cruelty going on there. Mm. Yeah, so back to what's going to happen in Zimbabwe. I was going to have a conversation with this hunting outfit and I sent them an email and they haven't replied. So I won't be making that telephone call to them, but I will make a video, excuse me, about it. And it's the final video to my follow up of the six or seven episodes I made in 2017 of Space for Giants. Space for Giants by Vegan Bro Science is about um, me back in Zimbabwe. I take a trip to Victoria Falls then down to Wanky National Park to do a little bit of research or find out what happened to the 20,000, nearly 40,000 elephants slaughtered in the 1980s by a conservationist come somebody who thought he could rethink God's ways. I forgot his name, but he was given permission by the Zimbabwean government. And we all know what they wanted that for. They said elephants were damaging the environment. Elephants are the biggest conservationists and environmentalists on this planet. When we see them destroying a tree, we see destruction. They are actually encouraging the circle of life on this planet. That action of them breaking down a tree gives so much employment to so many other creatures. We just don't hang around to see it. And so this guy, this guy, I'll remember his name shortly. Alan Savory. I had to go to this side of my brain, somewhere there. Do you see how my eyes went to the right? I searched the right side of my rear cortex. You learn that from life coaching. Um, Alan Savory, yeah, he, he done the maths and science. He, you guys, when you base too much on science and you put your faith in science, your faith in science and his theories. Now Alan Savory is living in regret, and, and he's, he, he admitted his mistake. The Zimbabwean government profited off the ivory that was taken from the elephants, slaughtered. And when I drove through Anki National Park, I found skull after skull after skull, white, bleached, showing that they were about 30, 40 years old, 20, 30 years old, um, with the tusks missing. And we drove through a part of Wanky National Park where they don't take tourists. We had our own vehicle. So you see, when you go on a safari, they're not going to take you there. I'm surprised they haven't removed those things. You know, evidence. If So if they're not killing them with cyanide or poaching them or doing hunting concessions, then the government is profiting off it. And how much do they make? two, three, four million, and they think that's going to refloat the economy again. And so CITES blocked that sale back in the 80s. And they were kept in stockpile storage. And then Grace Mugabe came along 
and with her diplomatic immunity to fly out of the country without her bags being searched, she was selling them off to Singapore. And you can watch a video by Adrian Stern. Adrian Stern. S T E I R N. He was a photographer. He's a photographer. He went undercover, acted like he was going to buy some ivory, and he eventually traced it to the first lady, former first lady of Zimbabwe, who was under investigation by the next prime minister. Um, Mugabe's right, former right hand man, and the story has just gone quiet and cold, especially now that Mugabe has passed away. Um, yeah, so yeah, the elephant skulls and stuff and stuff and stuff. So, I will make a follow up video to my um, the Lion King, the real Lion King. Uh, so, it won't be based on the telephone call to the hunting outfit, it will be based on. The last video I was meant to make that I saved for last because my instinct said so. All right. Now, can you guys see how hunting, how animals are connected to running, how the planet is connected to running? And if you're wondering why I'm going on about this, let's not forget that Elut Kepchogi uh, is a paid Patreon or ambassador. For save the rhinos yes elu kipchoge loves running uh, rhinos as well so yeah we need to take the fight to these guys man time's up no more social media time's up okay so uh are we enough guys a little few more comments and then i'm done if you don't stop watching me i won't stop talking uh, I think that was it. Where was Elu Kipchoge today? Did he run? He probably trained. Today Sunday. They normally do a 40k run. And they finish it in about 2 hours 20, 2 hours 25. So he probably done a 40k run today. Do I think he stopped to watch Bikili? No. Nah. These guys got tunnel vision. Have you ever, you ever been to a zoo and tried to get a, a lion's attention? Very, very hard. It's thinking of what it was made to do. And that's what athletes have tapped into. I really admire that. By the way, uh, Saeed, if he's watching, he's out in Ethiopia. He's got... Um, Saeed has got... What has he got? Uh, so you managed to get some x-rays done. Which is so funny because you can't get them done in a first world country here in London. You gotta you gotta have a really good excuse or pay cash. So he goes over to Ethiopia and uh, his injury is just hampering him. He's got underneath his foot, his right or left foot, there's a little growth. I forgot the name. Mm, it's calcified. And that's what's causing him injury. And then his hips are slightly tilted as well. So he's going to need some fixing. I hope he gets it fixed out there. And last time I spoke to him, I said, oh, okay, okay, you're there for five weeks. Just make the best of it out there. And get a bike. And run with the, and cycle with the athletes. And when they're done, you head off into the mountains and get the benefits of high altitude training. Might as well make the best of it. So I think he's got about a week or two left to come back. And I was in the process of editing a video of his. We had done. Um, but he wasn't too happy with it because he was falling asleep. It was the night before you were supposed to fly out to Ethiopia. It was quite late. And I was forcing him to make this video. <laughs> the dude was falling asleep. So he said, no, don't upload it. I'll come back and uh, we can do it again. So... When he comes back, I'll upload that video. I'll also have an update on Saeed, how he's doing out there in Ethiopia and where he is with his running at the moment. So that little channel of this channel hasn't stopped. Okay. Other than that, it'll be back to uh, vegan videos. Thank you to all my new followers, new subscribers, new people who have logged on to this channel. It is vegan based. Um... I don't throw it down your throat, but 
it will be nice. I think now the alarm bells are ringing. Now everything vegans have been saying about this planet and the way we are destroying it. We see the climate change activists and the young girl and David Attenborough setting ship on his sail that's just been commissioned by the Duchess, Prince William's wife and stuff. Yeah, now's the time. We need to wake up. And the biggest change you can make, the biggest, most powerful change you can make is what you put in your mouth. You, 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 you. Next, next, next. Once the demand for that type of food goes down, the cruelty and the treatment of animals will decrease on this planet. Eventually, it'll come to an end. I do see it come to an end. I don't know, it, I don't think it'll be in my lifetime, maybe, but it will come to an end and uh, we will be plant-based. Other than that, man, this planet is set for self-destruction. If you don't believe me, look up into the sky and have a look at all the other planets, what they look like. Maybe, just maybe that was us. <laughs> Crazy thought, eh? All right, guys. Right, okay. Let me shoot off. Thanks for watching. And vegan bro science. We'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.